Stand by, stand by. Test systems, testers being tested. I think we're good for launch. Let's transit. function. Hi boys and girls, it's me Butch. My name is Terry David Silvercloud. Uh, I'm uh, 77 years old. Uh, I live in Vancouver, British Columbia. Today is the uh, 10th of March 2022. In my old age I paint paintings and uh, make videos. And lately I've been interested in looking into really ancient ancient, ancient history. Uh, I have a pretty good knowledge going back to about the time of Abraham. <clears throat> so in my search, uh, I came across uh, this video by Praveen Mohan. Kumbaya artifacts, did airplanes exist 1,000 years ago? Uh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> What's that all about? Uh, don't be ridiculous. So... <clears throat> I checked it out, and here's uh, Praveen's uh, <coughs> YouTube page, and you can see he has uh, a million subscribers, and he has had on this channel 210 million, nearly 211 million uh, views, and if they were monetized, it means he has made at least uh, 210,000 US dollars or more from his channel, which is not chump change, even in India. So it kind of ticked me off that he's spreading, he's appealing to people with no knowledge of anything, ignorant people who don't know nothing, who are superstitious, and and they because they don't know anything, they don't know whether the wool's being paid, pulled over their eyes or or what. I mean, literally, they have they they have no idea. And he's making money off it, so he's not stupid, because you know he's doing it. He's making, he's making some uh, serious pocket change there. The boy is, uh, but maybe he is really ignorant. Maybe he isn't. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm smoking too much pot. Uh, <coughs> so, without further ado, I'm going to let you listen. In case you're not familiar with the video, to a couple of the quotes, and uh, here we go. Archaeologists claim that all these artifacts represent birds, but there is not a single species of bird which has wings attached to its bottom. There's another bird and see how it looks. Notice how the details clearly show the wing is attached at the top of its body and the tail is pointing sideways, sharply contrasted to the airplanes. This is why most people call them Kimbaya airplanes because these were found in an ancient civilization called Kimbaya. About 20 years ago, two engineers made a bigger model of these planes and put some controls inside and it flew like a regular airplane. This is conclusive evidence that ancient Colombians were making models of flying machines more than a thousand years ago, even though we read that Wright brothers invented airplanes just a hundred years ago. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So, 
let me start the debunking here. Let me put this down here a bit and let me uh, open up uh, my uh, my uh, web page here. So, if you Google airplane Quimbaya, yes, you will come up with uh, usually replicas of uh, of these particular pendants. So, in that particular regard, uh, he's he's not completely wrong at all. Uh, however, he never once mentions the idea of flying fish. And that's the first thing I thought of when I started looking at them after he said that. And it didn't take a 77-year-old like me very long to find lots of information. And on the Metropolitan Museum of Arts website in their antiquities, they have uh, a couple of these things. And you can see it's clearly labeled a flying fish pendant. And here's another page from their uh, website. I don't know if it's silver or a black and white photo. My eyes in my old age aren't so good anymore. Uh, but again, it's clearly labeled as a flying fish pendant. And then he goes on and on about uh, engineers building a model and it actually flew. Well, if it was based on a flying fish, it probably would. And a paper plane flies too, not very far. But, you know, but the principle of a wing is that the upper surface, uh, the surface above, has to have more surface area than the bottom surface. And that will give the plane lift. And that's partly why uh, an airplane can fly, uh, you know, with those huge, huge jet engines hanging off them. And the wings are full of fuel. That's where the fuel tanks are. Or a lot of the fuel is in the wings. You think, well, how is that going to work? But actually, the wing is doing just fine once they start moving fast enough and the wing starts holding up the rest of the plane, which is where you're sitting. So the wings are doing just fine, and we've built flying wings. So there's no definitive proof of anything. Engineers who probably shaped the wings to look the way they're supposed to be aerodynamically, and if you look at the models, they're flat. doesn't mean they wouldn't actually fly, but... Uh, that's just crap. Uh, and if you start looking seriously at these things, oops, going to make that go away. Don't know why that's there. Um, if you look at them, you can see they have eyes, they have a nose, they have a mouth, their, their tails have uh, ribs like a, a fish would. Uh, the wings are fairly flat. Uh, but they also made fine cool jewelry, like like there's a lobster. Uh, so they obviously were in, and there's a real fish of some sort. And they were obviously into, there's a, a really, a gold conch shell, a shark, there's a shark. Uh, and they liked fish things for who knows why. And, they, and on the lower right you can see a finely crafted actual representation of a real flying fish. Let's look at some real flying fishies. And uh, you'll see it becomes evident quite quickly that uh, how remarkably similar these uh, ornaments are to actual real flying fish, which can be quite pretty and may have been of some importance to these people, either for food or who knows why, you know, who knows why. Maybe they ate them. It, 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 I'm not going to speculate here at all, but uh, flying fish live are spread, different types are spread around the world, in, uh, tropical and subtropical waters. You don't, I don't think you ever find them in northern waters, but I've seen them myself. I drove submarines. I was a naval officer. I drove submarines and uh, a repair ship and a destroyer and uh, passed through the Bermuda Triangle many times and saw lots of flying fish and porpoise and I even saw a mirage once. I saw Rotterdam upside down in the sky. You know, when I was on a submarine in the, a long time ago. Where am I going? Anyhow, you got the idea. You can see that uh, uh, they're flying fish. And, and Mohan is just trying to be sensational and, and not... He could at the end at least say, well, you know, they're also known as flying fish. He doesn't do any of that. He doesn't seem to care or he doesn't know. And it bugs me that 
there's so much bad, bad, bad information out there on, on the internet these days that uh, unless you know your stuff, how do you know how to uh, to verify it? So if you're interested in old stuff, you have to ask yourself, well, what's old? Mine is old. All right, see on the upper left there, that's a... Uh, that's a, an Indian temple, the oldest standing Indian temple. India, as a civilization, died out around the same time as the Old Kingdom had trouble and Ur vanished and uh, there was some serious climatic issues going on and the, the Indus Valley had been quite well developed and then it just collapsed along with Ur and so not much of anything left around there that I'm aware of that they can tell a lot from. But, you know, this is 5th century, and right below it is a, a Mayan temple of the same period in Mexico, in Veracruz. And if the architecture looks similar, uh, that's not at all really surprising because the Native Americans, of which we are familiar, seem to have come by way of Siberia and uh, DNA suggests that they have traces of uh, DNA from as far away as India. So that's not surprising, but maybe there was an earlier culture that was simply literally obliterated, like completely, 100% from, from uh, many parts of the world, including South America. So on the right, here's a thousand years old. This is what uh, Notre Dame Cathedral looked like when it, about a thousand years ago, and they started building it about 1,200 years ago. But you can see it has uh, very, very large... Uh, I'm doing something there. It Off to the side, it has... Uh, let me go to... Shoot, where am I here? Bear with me, I'm doing the slide. This is what happens when you go... Uh, uh, crap, crap, crap. RGB view. There we go. I can show you something here. Camera 2. Go to camera 2. Uh, off the side of uh, Notre Dame Cathedral, there's things called flying buttresses, and they have lots of windows. So they discovered that the way to hold up an extraordinarily heavy roof made of shale, rock, was to have windows to allow for compression of the walls, and even then to have supports off the side, which was pretty much, as far as we know, a European invention of the time. And also, uh, people learned how to make a dome that wouldn't fall down or collapse. And the secret to a dome is it has to either be standing on pillars to absorb the compression, the pillars will do the compressing and wobbling, or there has to be windows uh, spaced evenly around the, the dome. Uh, at least several, four or more lots are good, and then the dome won't collapse on itself. So a thousand years ago, that's the kind of uh, architecture that uh, was going on. And, and in India, uh, that that kind of stuff, you know, that he's talking about less than a, th you know, a thousand years ago, that, that just isn't old. So where am I? I I'm going on and on and on and on. Megalus, do we go to Megalus yet? Uh, this is where I want to go. Around the world, uh, we can find megalithic, which means like really, really, really big stones. There you go. And with highly precise cuts interlocking. They're not just in Peru and, and South America. There's, you can find them in Italy. And, and um, there's a little man standing there in Baalbek and, and Lebanon and places like that. And usually on top of them are more inferior stone works. So that leads to the idea that possibly uh, some civilization from long ago totally collapsed and people, when they finally rebuilt, uh, just simply built on top of things they found left and used what rocks were, but used base stone, stones that were already there. Uh, the pyramids, the Great Pyramid, and the ones around them, there's a possibility that they were not built by Egyptians. Uh, they don't have hieroglyphs in them, and they were empty, so who knows what got stolen out of them, because by the time we got them, they were empty. 
And there's a really big rock with tiny little people on top of it. The point I'm trying to make here is that Praveen, he's trying to uh, do India service and he's doing it a disservice by not being really honest in what he's talking about and putting all these speculative kind of things to make his ratings go up and foolish people might actually believe him. Uh, that just really bothers me. You know, India, even though it may not have a history and fine going back uh, architecturally that far. There are some very old writings for a couple thousand years. Uh, and they invented the number zero. They invented the numbers we use, one, two, three, four, five. I believe they invented a game which is basically chess. It had a different name, but it's, it was chess. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was invented in India. Maybe I'm wrong. You can correct me if you want in the comments. Where am I? I talk and talk and talk and talk. So the issue is not moving large stones altogether because people can do that and they've done it. Uh, you know, they have moved uh, large stones around. Um, but precision cutting, that's, that's just another thing. Uh, so you might want to look more into that and keep an open mind and just don't jump to conclusions uh, until you've seen a lot, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of information. Give me a second here. Camera two, go to camera two. Dry both. I take painkillers so my nose clogs up just when I don't need. There's a lot of people that have proposed, not a lot, but there's a few people, a couple, who have proposed uh, that the Earth is trying to, the, the, the continents are trying to take the surfaces of uh, some kind of platonic solid. And the original idea was a tetrahedron. So there's a model of a tetrahedron with the land masses, the primary land masses drawn on them, and the water masses drawn on them. And this idea, to the best of my knowledge, started being kicked around by uh, uh, William Lothian Green, who was a geologist. And uh, you can see just to the lower left down there, uh, down, oops, down below there, what the Earth would look like if the ocean sank one mile. His ideas were based on physics, that uh, the shape with the most surface and the least volume is a tetrahedron. And that's what the land would like to do. And he wasn't totally alone because Professor J.W. Gregory, uh, who was apparently quite racist but uh, quite smart, um, and he had a rift valley named after him. He noticed that if you look at the Earth from the North Pole, that the continents appear to be taking the faces of a tetrahedron. Uh, so he wasn't the only person thinking along that idea. Um, what else do I want to go on about here? Another person you want to be familiar with if you're really getting into ancient cultures is this particular book and this particular guy. Uh, Thomas Chan or Chan Thomas, I don't know what way it's supposed to go. And uh, that's not the actual real book cover, but it's a facsimile. The Adam and Eve Story, The History of Cataclysms. Now that book, when it was published, uh, was uh, classified top secret and removed from publishing and books seized and was top secret until a couple of years back uh, and through freedom of information kind of things uh, has been released but has parts of it redacted. But with the digital age upon us, uh, people out there did have original copies. So if you really want to see the actual, actual, actual non-redacted, you can probably find that if you do some serious research. But I'll give you a, a, a quick uh, overview of what uh, he was on about, is, is that he feels the Earth uh, periodically undergoes cataclysmic events, and they may be cyclical. Uh, he's not necessarily alone in that. Uh, some of them are climatic, and, and they feed off each other, so it's hard to sort all these things out. Uh, but he feels that about just when the uh, Ice Age was 
ending the last one or the second last one of things were going quite well and civilization had become fairly advanced. Remember, a thousand years is a long time. Uh, the United States is only a couple hundred years old and you know, Jesus was only 2,000 years ago. That's why I talk about Praveen's videos. That's, that's not long ago. We got to talk about long ago, really long ago. So this Chan Thomas or Thomas Chan, his his pitch is, is that for reasons why we don't know, except that we do know the Earth is one gigantic magnet. And another thing we know is that the Earth moves through space each year about 7 billion kilometers. Now you think that the Earth is going in circles or ellipses, whatever keeps you happy. I'm not arguing that. Whatever makes you happy is fine with me. Uh, elliptical circle, I don't care. But that's a relativity illusion. That's how you would view it if you were just watching the sun and the plant. You kept your eye on the sun and didn't take your eye off the sun. You didn't notice that the stars are flying by at horrendous speed because uh, you've got your eye on the sun and the planets are doing their thing around it. But if you step back and looked at space, you would see that uh, what's really happening is the sun is spiraling through space, probably with its south pole forward, and the planets are all doing their thing around it with their south poles aimed in the direction of travel. Not necessarily, that may be why we're a little bit off kilter, because we're sort of going down a drain which the Milky Way is creating, and our actual path through space is a helical wave. And just one wave per year, seven billion kilometers long, and its its amplitude is how far we are. The sun's in the middle, and we're we're on either side as we're go, as we're going. Th oops, going through space there. I'll try this camera. I just realized you're not seeing me. So, <laughs> shoot. What was I doing? Anyhow, hope you got that because that's what happens when you're going live. I guess I really screwed that up. Uh, I was looking at the wrong camera. I don't know what you were seeing. Where are we? Uh, uh, anyhow, he, uh, his story, the story of Chan Thomas, Thomas Chan. So when this happened, the magnet, which is the Earth, either did a really violent shake or flipped, reversed its poles and flipped back again, or the poles went to the equator and we started spinning differently. Uh, but because the pyramids and, and the Kaaba are aligned north and south, and most of these buildings seem to be aligned north and south. The good news is is that they were built since the pole is where it is now. The bad news is maybe a big event like this is going to come again. Maybe not in our lifetime, but in a thousand years. Maybe if I, we don't know, uh, but uh, it could happen. And these things don't happen in a... Uh, period of like a thousand years or something like that and the mountains do their thing it happens in a single day and the problem is even if the earth flipped oops sorry sorry about that um, even if the earth flipped and flipped back the oceans which are water and are fluid and, and, and are considerably large have huge inertia like they weigh like you know uh, a, a cubic foot of water weighs, uh, what, 75 pounds? Something like that. It's heavy. Uh, <coughs> so tons and tons and tons of water were, were swirling around. And if the Earth did do this and there were violent earthquakes, not only would there be violent earthquakes, the water would just keep going around the Earth. At the equator, it's moving uh, 1,037 miles per hour. So the water would just sweep right over the continents and at a thousand miles an hour. <laughs> Imagine you get hit by water traveling even a couple of hundred miles an hour. A car, a car moving at 60 miles an hour is moving 88 feet per second. So uh, you can imagine if uh, uh, that's at 60 miles per hour, 88 feet a second. If it was traveling at several hundred miles or a thousand miles, there would be everything would be wiped out, and you would have to be underground or 
just very, very lucky somewhere. And this guy, Chan Thomas, or Thomas Chan, he proposes that that's exactly what happened. And that's where our cavemen came from. They were the survivors. And the survivors probably built the pyramid at Giza. Uh, and uh, that there have been other cataclysms, which you'll get into, the Garden of Eden and all that, you know, the great floods and, and stuff like that. So I'm going on and on and on and on and on. Have I covered it all? I, I've really gone on for a long time. And all of this was, if you're still here, to debunk Praveen's videos. I wouldn't pay attention to him until he starts getting real and, you know, be proud of India and, and its achievements and uh, don't start speculating on uh, stuff that's only a thousand years old. That ain't old. It's not even remotely old. Europe was getting, uh, Europe was coming out of the Dark Ages. Uh, the Crusades were happening and the Muslim nation was very advanced in science and architecture and the Europeans suddenly discovered how ignorant they really were. But the church didn't want people to know a lot of this stuff and uh, so the Roman Catholic Church has been busy suppressing information for 2,000 years and they're still doing it. I, I'm an atheist. I, I hate religions and, and I don't like any of them. So. I'm an equal opportunity religion hater. They're all evil. That's my view. I'm entitled to it. <laughs> so, what am I doing? I covered it all. Credits. Got to do the credits. Here's credits. And I'll shut up. So, I have to give credit to... Uh, oops. Bang my mic again. That guy down there. I might have used his photo somewhere in a slide of something or other. So, that and... and uh, I don't have to, but I'll give uh, credit to... Uh, uh, pond5.com and pixabay.com because I may have probably did use uh, some of their stuff uh, and uh, that's about it so Butch is going to shut up uh, I have to uh, where are we here my eyesight's so bad Angles, what am I looking for here so let's get back to the, uh, my control panel here and there we are and I'm going to shut up so it's uh, bye-bye from Butch.